But now you've got a patient that is not in centripetation. If one joint, let's say, is, another one is not, but this patient is great. What you do now is you're placing the crown that is just too high, and you do not do the calibration on this crown because, I don't know, either maybe you do it but in the wrong way, or you just didn't have time and you let your patient go back home, saying, on Friday we're going to deal with that. And now your patient is going back home and something happens. Now look what happens. Those teeth, if they do not have contact, what will happen? You remember from Wednesday. This contact will go down a little bit, this one will go up a little bit, but actually nothing terrible to the joints will not happen. That will not be a huge compression, that will not be a positive load test, but something in the bite has changed. Now, this condo was in CR, but is not anymore. This one wasn't, but is in CR now. Now look what happens, because this is the moment when you can consider your patient to be crazy, but he's not crazy. Now, this patient is coming to your office after three days, and all the teeth are in contact, finally. And the patient is telling you that there is something wrong in the bike. You are checking all the teeth and you think like, seems like it's holding everything. Now, you know that you did this tooth. Now you grind this tooth down so that you've got infra-occlusion. There is no more contact even on this tooth. And the patient is still telling you, doctor, there is something wrong. And you are telling your patient, Mr. Jones, this is the tooth I did, that I did. Now this tooth has no contact at all. So it's not my fault. You know that this tooth, when this tooth has no contact, it cannot be the reason of your bite change, right? But it's not the truth. You already changed the bite just because some position in the condyl has changed. So this patient is not crazy anymore. And you can even extract this tooth and the bite will still be changed. The same as we know that when we extract the wisdom teeth that are, let's say, premature contact to CR, your condyle finally can go into the CR and the bite will also be changed. Those people with extracted wisdom teeth that say that the bite has changed are not crazy people. So now what are you going to do with this? I would say that either you, you, you're going to wait until the patient finally adapts to this position because probably that will happen or you will have to do some deprogrammation, so you will separate the teeth, you will let the brain of the patient, you know, as we mentioned, deprogrammation is artificial term, that could be pseudo term, but the cortical remapping is reality. So you just let the teeth to separate, you just let the brain to forget about the teeth, the contacts between the teeth, the jaw is finding, let's say, the best position, the most stable position in the joint. Now you register this bite and you have to decide what you're going to do with this because maybe the teeth will not have this perfect contacts anymore. And now you will have to do maybe some little bite equilibration or you would just add a little bit of the composite on the teeth of the cusps. So now you have that both condyles in a pretty good position with that equal simultaneous bilateral contacts on T because that is the final goal. Not the CR, but the equal simultaneous bilateral contacts on both sides. And you know, with this patient, we, were, we just had a bad luck because he didn't need the CR. We changed something in those condos and now he feels uncomfortable. And maybe he feels uncomfortable because there is something in his life that is now ongoing. Maybe he has some stress. Maybe he cannot just not handle those changes because he, he didn't sleep well or something. So you could just have a bad luck. But you know, on Monday morning patient, you cannot just say, okay, I've got a bad luck. What I'm gonna do with it? <laughs> you have to have some tools and you have to know that this patient is not crazy. Position. Maybe you just give something at night, you let them wait, we wait for the regression to the mean, and then it will just go off just by itself. Yeah? So if you want to stay conservative, and this is what I would recommend, not to go with the birds straight away, I would rather give him the night guard, I would tell him how to change the lifestyle, how to sleep well, what to do, I would send maybe to a psychologist if there are some problems with stress, but of course not every single patient that 
feels the bite that is strange, will need a psychiatrist or a psychologist. And this is like, of course, yes? In this situation, probably we would get yeah. both condos in CR, and maybe now we would have, like, if this one goes up, probably we would have some new contacts in here, and we could equilibrate it. But as I as I said, you know, maybe you're gonna equilibrate those teeth, and the bite has changed so much that since you start doing it in a natural dentition, you're gonna have to grind ten teeth, not only two, right? I would first do it in the articulator because. Bite equilibration, after all, must be predictable. You have to know where you're going to end up. So first do it in the articulator, then do it in the mouth, if you really, really want to do that. In most of the cases, you do not want to do that. You would rather add some volume rather than decrease the natural teeth. Because, also, what we said is that occlusion is very rarely the reason for TMD, because in most of the cases, if the occlusion could be a reason, it is that significant change in bite, that that would be rather this. So if the, this is the shift of the mandible, and one condyl is distalized, another one is in a third position, and when you finally place it in a good position, probably that would be the contact on the teeth, so equilibration will not change anything in it. Orthodontics will probably make the position of the teeth well with the good position of the mandible, right? So this is the rule of thirds from Ockison, and this is the position of the teeth that could be pretty good equilibrated. This is more for prosthetics because that would be too much for equilibration, and that is not even good for prosthetics. That should be that should be done with orthodontics, right? <laughs>